Hi, Moral Recap here. Today I'm going to explain about a movie called We Can Be Heroes. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. The film opens above the clouds while we listen to a voiceover narrating that even in the darkest of times, Earth's team of superheroes has never failed them. We see one of them, Miracle Guy, hovering above the sky. He is soon joined by another hero, Techno, and they have a short chat. Miracle Guy flies to outer space and sees an alien spaceship coming towards Earth. He thinks it's an easy task to deal with and takes a selfie. But soon he is shot and falls back into Earth's atmosphere. Techno grabs him in mid-air, but his jetpack runs out of fuel. The voiceover returns and says that was the day when their heroes fell. But from that, other superheroes would emerge. That same morning, Missy wakes up to her alarm clock and tries to decide which t-shirt she is going to wear. Her father, Marcus, is trying to fix some breakfast, but he can't concentrate while hearing the news about Miracle Guy and Techno. Missy joins him, and it is revealed that Marcus is a member of the Heroics, but he does not fight. He only does office work. Marcus drives Missy to school and then heads to the Heroics headquarters. There, Miss Grenada is trying to determine which couple of heroes to send to outer space to fight the incoming threat. Marcus tells her that two heroes are not enough. He shows her the incoming aliens on the monitor, and they are just too much. She says that she is going to send everyone, Marcus included. Marcus says that he does not fight anymore, but Miss Grenada tells him that she is not asking him, she is ordering him. Back at school, Missy is trying to get a ball from the top of a tree. The other girls expect her to have some superpowers since she is the daughter of a heroic, but she has none. Shortly, two agents come and get her to drive her at the heroic's headquarters. There, Miss Grenada explains the situation to her and guides her to an underground stronghold, along with the children of the other heroics. The kids are studying and are quiet, but once Miss Grenada is gone, the kids go wild. One of the kids, Wheels, approaches Missy and introduces himself. They call him Wheels because he is on a wheelchair, but that's not because he has weak legs. To the contrary, he has very strong legs, and the ground can't support him when walking. One by one, Wheels introduces Missy to the other kids and their powers. Noodles, who can stretch all the parts of his body to the extreme. Ojo, who only speaks through her drawings. Missy takes a look at them and later realizes that what she draws actually gets to happen a bit later. A cappella, a girl who can sing so high and so low that she can make objects move. Slowmo, who is normally very fast, but he has been somehow trapped into a time warp and moves slowly. Facemaker, who can manipulate his face in any way he wants. Rewind, who can rewind time back a couple of seconds. Fast Forward, who is Rewind's twin sister and can move time forth for a couple of seconds. Although they are twins, they don't like each other. The two remaining kids are Wildcard, who has every power one can imagine, but he can't control them and they appear randomly. And Guppy, who can control water and is very strong. The kids sit at their desks again and watch the news. The television is covering the alien invasion and the heroics rush to fight them. One by one, the heroics are captured by the aliens and the kids feel sorry and worried about them. Marcus is the last man standing and has a short communication with Missy, telling her that he is their leader and he has to set a good example. He tries to fight the aliens, but is captured as well. The broadcasting is interrupted by Miss Grenada, who tells the kids to stay in their seats. The building will be put into lockdown, and as long as they stay in there, they will be safe. The kids argue about what they should do. Missy gets Ojo's tablet and says that whatever Ojo draws happens in the near future. 
She has drawn an alien breaking in the facility, and that means that the aliens are coming for them. The kids come up with a plan, and they lure the security guards into the room. They manage to immobilize them, but one of the guards presses the alarm button, and their plan fails. Missy tells Wheels to not allow the guard to press the alarm the next time. Missy tells Rewind to send them back in time he rewinds, and he rewinds time. This time, the plan goes well, and the kids steal the access cards from the grounds and escape the room. While running away, they get surrounded by agents. Missy sees a hatch on the ceiling. A cappella sings really low and makes the guards float in the air, forming a staircase. The kids step on the guards and reach the hatch. They climb to the upper floor and use the access cards to open the doors of the electric wagon. They walk in and they manage to escape. Wheels says that the agents will be able to catch up with them and he is right. A bunch of agents appear right in front of them, waiting for the tram. Wildcar tells Acapella to make them fly. She sings in low pitch and makes them fly past the agents. Acapella signals Missy that she can't steer the tram, and Missy says they are going to crash into a building. Noodles hooks his hands inside the tram and stretches to the outside until he reaches the ground. He puts his other hand onto a column and is able to change the direction of the wagon. He flings back in the tram and they escape. Missy guides the team to her grandmother, Anita, who appears to be an old trainer of the heroics. Missy tells Anita that they needed a place to hide, but Anita tells them that they need to do a lot more than that. The world is in danger, and the aliens are going to take over the planet in the next couple of hours. Missy doubts if they can become superheroes, but Anita says they can if they work as a team. Individual powers don't compare to teamwork. Anita says that the team needs a leader, and that leader will be Missy. She then takes the kids to the training grounds, and each kid has to work on their weaknesses. For example, Gumpy has to work on her anger management issues, while Rewind and Fast Forward have to learn to work in sync with each other. Missy looks over all of them and tries to guide them. In the end of the day, the training proves to be a disaster, and Missy seems pretty disappointed. Inside the alien spaceship, the heroes fight and blame their failure on one another. Marcus tries to calm them down until a hovering camera floats into the room and a message from the president appears. He says that he wasn't allowed much time for this message and informs them that their children have disappeared from the headquarters. The heroes comment that the kids must be completely lost and helpless without them. Back in the training grounds, Missy seems disappointed. Anita sits next to her and tells her to cheer up. She has trained many heroics with the superpowers, but the best of them was Missy's mother. Missy says that her mother had no superpowers, and Anita replies that it doesn't matter. The kids call Anita, and they realize that the agents have found them. Anita opens up a secret tunnel and tells the kids to go in. The kids vanish, and someone visits Anita. She seems surprised when some tentacles suddenly grab her. Missy takes Ojo's tablet and sees what she has drawn. She says that there is an alien ship nearby, probably to get resupplied. They get to the ship, and they are lucky enough to fly it into the mothership. The team navigates its way around until they reach the core of the ship, where they see the president of the country speaking with another man and asking when the takeover is going to start. Missy says they need to stop them, but when they turn around, they see Miss Grenada. She says they did a good job getting here and is very friendly towards them. The kids realize that something is wrong. The president appears next to her and says they know the truth. Tentacles come out of the president's and Grenada's back and they capture the kids. The kids get thrown in a cell while Anita is also thrown in the cell with the adult heroes. Gumpy tries to bang the door open, but she needs water to be able to work. Missy comes up with a plan and gives a moving speech that makes everyone cry. Then she tells Guppy to gather all the tears. Guppy does so, and she uses the tears to form a key. That key unlocks the door and they get out of their cell. Missy says they need to stop the invasion, but Wildcard says they need to release their parents so they can deal with it. 
They fight, and Wildcard takes Facemaker with him, and they walk away. The rest of the team stays together, but they have to face an entire team of aliens. Missy says they can deal with them if they work together. The team works well, and they eliminate their enemies. Meanwhile, Wildcard fights with Facemaker, and they divide. Grenada watches them on a monitor and says they need to get Wildcard because he is so powerful and uncontrollable that he could accidentally blow them away. The aliens proceed, and they get Wildcard. The rest of the team approaches the core of the ship, but now a force shield appears, preventing them from stopping the invasion. As it is revealed, Ojo is an alien spy that has been watching them, but the team won't give up that easy. Missy communicates with Wildcard, who is in the control room of the ship. Missy reveals that their fight was a trick, and Grenada got Facemaker, who shapeshifted as Wildcard. Wildcard deactivates the Force Shield, but Ojo draws some monsters in her tablet, and she brings them to life. Missy tells Wheels to deal with the invasion, as there are only two minutes left till it starts, and they will deal with the monsters. Simultaneously, Grenada and her guards burst into the control room, but that's not a problem for Wildcard who now believes in himself and can control his powers. Both sides put a good fight and the team wins. Wildcard and Facemaker reunite with the rest of the team and they are able to switch the motherboards at the core of the ship, but they are a second late. Ojo says that the takeover is about to happen. However, all the heroics are released and reunited with their children. The President, Grenada, and Ojo reveal that the takeover doesn't refer to an invasion, but to a passing of power. This whole mission has been a test and a training for the kids. They say that it is in everyone's best interest for the people of Earth to grow. They didn't want to conquer Earth, but to show them that teamwork is what gets things done. Ojo asks Missy if she can count on her, if she ever needs her help, and Missy says yes. The kids hug their proud parents, and they are ready to take upon their new responsibilities. Subscribe and hit that like button to help our channel grow. Turn the notifications on so you won't miss any of our new videos. Thanks for watching.